Hi everyone, welcome to Welford Weaves. My name is Rachel. I can be found pretty much everywhere as Woolen Spinning or Welford Pearls. I want to welcome you to this place. Thank you so much. This will be our last episode of Welford Weaves for the year, so I hopefully will see you back here again in January. But for the sort of remainder of December, this will sort of be it. I wanted to sort of talk really briefly about my weaving over this past year and some of the things that I've been thinking about with my weaving. And, um, and then I'll share with you a little bit about what's on my loom right now because it's been a slog to get it threaded and I'm working under a wee bit of a deadline. So I thought that I would share that big project with you here today and that will round us out for 2022. So this year has been a big year and there's been a lot happen. Uh, we have, when it comes to weaving, I can't believe how far I have come in one year of learning it, it and, and the, the, the ability to speak to various things that where I just didn't have the vocabulary last year um, has been really humbling and really incredible. Um, I started out the year working on my twill, a twill gap and really honing in on that knowledge that I had started to learn and started to amass uh, during the OHS unit one, which is on plain weave and twill. So my twill gap went through from straight draw one, two, three, four, which we'll talk about again in a moment when we talk about some crackle towels I'm working on. Um, I did point twill and I did broken twill and then I did bird's eye twill. And so as I wove at the loom, I used eight, four cotton and I worked through this project and just really enjoyed the process. I'm not going to do anything with it at this point. I've put submitting for the GCW and doing all this different stuff on hold for now. Um, I just want to enjoy this process and make these gaps because I want to make them and I want to enjoy the learning that goes with them. So this was where the year kind of started and the amount of learning that I did, the uh, honing in on some of the things that I thought was true, but I wasn't sure and coming up with some ideas for fabric for the future, all these things really helped me to start to give some language around what this stuff looks like and what I could maybe create in the future. From there, the next thing, after I finished unit two for the OHS, for the Ontario Hand Weavers and Spinners Master Weaver, I got into this. So this was when the whole world started to open up for me. I had dabbled in plain weave, I had dabbled in twill, I felt like I had a pretty good grasp of weaving with wool. Um, I had made quite a number of runs of tea towels by then and I was really starting to understand how this stuff works and how these different structures relate to themselves. And in an effort to start to make some big jumps in my learning, I went to overshot. So I had never woven overshot before. I am still amazed at myself that I just kind of jumped in. Um, but this was the overshot sampler from uh, Next Steps in Weaving. And this book is great because it just kind of gets you going on the next thing. Uh, I used I feel like it was uh, 10 2 cotton for the warp and weft. And then I started playing around with my hand spun as pattern. And I wove everything from on, on opposites to flame point to, um, you know, just, you know, straight draw to the pattern, which was Star of Bethlehem. Um, I wove it as circles. I wove it in rose fashion. I wove it in star fashion. I did all this stuff. There were mistakes. Um, there were treadling errors. I learned so much and I started to understand what the difference is between a unit weave and a block weave. I started to understand what makes these, these weave structures so interesting. Um, I started to really get fired up about weaving again. I had felt really stressed um, about unit one and unit two. It, it, it was busy, it was heavy to get those two units finished. And um, once I got into this stuff, I felt like there was all of a sudden the, the world started to open up in terms of creativity and using our hand spun and our weaving. And this piece in particular was really a big aha moment for me that like I can do this. 
Now from there, I uh, started to uh, play around with M's and O's. And the reason was because um, I was still thinking about submitting and, and putting a portfolio together for the GCW. And I wanted to understand this structure because for your basics portfolio, this is one of the structures that you need to hone in on. And you can weave a baby blanket, a scarf or a stole. My plan is still to weave something in my hand spun, but it won't be for submission. It'll be for myself. But I took a whole bunch of yarn from my stash. This was my initial sampler. And uh, I played around with the M's and O's sort of, uh, you know, conundrum around, do you want plain weave on your borders or do you want plain weave ish in your fabric? And so I did a little bit of both. So these, this has a uh, plain weave on the border and then I re-threaded afterwards. But of course you can see that the M's and O's, the ribbing goes all the way down and you can't get plain weave-ish um, on this threading. And so I changed it around. So this one I cut off and did some sampling with and I finally got it hemmed uh, the other day. And then I, this was a wee little one that came off at the end of the loom and I love it so much. It's just this little fingertip towel. But you can see here, uh, this same, I hadn't changed the threading yet. So it's still, um, I can't, you can't get plain weave ish if you have plain weave on your selvages. So you can see how beautiful the selvages are, but you can't get plain weave, but from a distance, like you can't tell. So it keeps on going. It just looks like the pattern continues, but I wanted to see what plain weave ish would look like and how the threading was different. We talked about that on the show, um, on a previous episode of Welford weaves. And you know what? The ones that are the uh, that gave me the plain weave ish down here, I don't have any of them. They're all um, in a different pile. So these five were uh, no six. Holy smokes! Um, were all with the plain weave threaded at the selvages, and these four were the ones that were like the final prototypes. These two were samples. These first two, and you can see how crazy the colors are on this one. I threw a pink in there and red and I've got orange in there. It's just a totally scrappy towel. Um, and these ones were woven only with the yarns in the warp. So I took all of the colors and I just wove them as uh, warp and weft. So they're a little bit more understated, a little bit gentler. Uh, there is black and dark brown in here. There's gray, there's this gorgeous golden okra color. Um, I think they came out really beautifully. I love these towels so much. And you can see that I've got a really nice selvage because I chose to thread it so that it would give me the plain weave on the selvages and not in the hems. But in the end, I think it worked out really well because the pattern just keeps going and nobody's looking at the hems of your tea towels as closely as you are. It's just fact. We fuss about this stuff. The mere muggles out there in the world that live their lives that don't think about all this stuff, they don't even notice. So um, I had that aha moment of a few months ago actually when somebody was looking at something that was hand woven and she was like, um, a couple of the comments that she made trying to understand like how this is made and how these are done. I realized like she didn't see any of the things that I saw in the fabric that I saw as mistakes or not being good enough or not being perfect enough. So don't be too critical. The muggles don't know. Um, so there's four of these that are kind of like the, the finished prototypes. I am for sure, for sure keeping two of these as well as these two, cause these were, um, kind of samples. And I think the other two are going to go to my brother and sister-in-law because they are the colors of my sister-in-law's kitchen. And they're also hers and my favorite colors. <laughs> so it makes sense to give that to her. I have to admit though, this really super scrappy one, it worked out quite well. And um, if this wasn't so labor intensive to change uh, shuttles every 12 picks, I probably would have woven more of these. Um, but that was actually one of the reasons why I did go to the plain weave on the outside of these was because of having to fuss with the salvages and changing the shuttles so much. So that is the M's and O's. Again, you know, um, 18 ends per inch, 18 picks per inch, uh, eight two cotton in the warp and weft, super straightforward. And I just used uh, uh, scraps. I just used tubes that I had enough that I knew I could get an 11 yard warp woven off and not run out of these colors. So I ended up with five actual towels uh well yeah five actual towels and one little fingertip towel plus a lot of sampling a lot of sampling 
Through the summer, I worked on my OHS unit three. It has been submitted. I have received it back from marking, so I am done three of my units out of 18. <laughs> I will continue to plug along with all of that. Um, and so while I was working on my unit three, I also worked on my X's and O's little uh, coasters. These were fun. So I ended up weaving these up in two different colorways, quote unquote, and I did re-thread the, the, the loom. I did these on my Louette Jane and um, I used scrappy hand spun yarn that I had had in my stash that I had spun eons ago. And uh, these were just fun. Um, I used 8-4 cotton for the warp. It sort of was meant to be like a rug warp kind of idea. And then you're doing a really close rep weave type uh, packing it down, completely covering your warp. And uh, these were just fun. I ended up with a crap ton of all of them. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to include four of these uh, with the gift that's going to uh, my brother and sister-in-law. Probably these blue ones because I think they're really, really pretty and they have more of the colors that my sister-in-law likes. Um, and the dark blue was Perindale. Again, the light, the, the, the color was a bat that I had spun up from Sarah Elizabeth Fiberworks years ago. This one was a Herdwick bat, actually. I got the idea from somebody within our woolen spinning community to use the Herdwick for these. It was perfect. It was from one of Katrina's fiber clubs from a few years ago, and it was a Herdwick bat that was part of the, the fiber club. It was super fun to spin, but after it was like, what do I do with this yarn? This this is what you do with this yarn. It was perfect. Um, and then the cream was like old unmarked hand spun uh, that I, I still don't really actually know what it was. And it worked really, really well. These were fun. It's a pattern by Amanda Rattage. You can find it on her website and uh, really, really effective. So that was next and this was really fun. Okay, so from there, I went to have drill, have drill, have drill. I can't say it the Swedish way. The way that they say it is just so wonderful. But I went to these and I have a confession to make. They are still on the loom. They are still causing me problems. Um, there's a few things that I have learned about this, this uh, project and this pattern. Um, and I will share more on this in the new year once I weave off the final few towels. Uh, so let me show you one that I didn't make a major mistake. And um, I would just like to remind everybody that I am human and that I make mistakes, <laughs> as we all do. And um, this was really humbling. Uh, and there was a few things that happened with this, and there's a reason why I haven't spoken about it. And um, it's mostly just because I was trying to figure out where I had made the mistake and why I had messed up. So these are woven in the manner of overshot. I knew that going into this project, um, but I did not print the pattern. It is a wonderful pattern by Ariana Funk. This is my mistake, not the pattern mistake. It's available on justyarn.com. And um, it's, a, it's a great pattern, but I did not print it in color. So. I threaded, I wound my warp, I threaded, I did all the things, I set it up on my loom, and there were two things that I didn't do that I should have done in hindsight. The first one was I needed to spread my edge threads out just a little bit more than I did because they got really um, sort of twisted and they were just too tight on the outside edges. And because you're putting quite a, you know, a thicker pattern yarn in between, you just need added space. And so I really needed to spread out those edge threads a little bit more than what would give you set. So if it was, I can't even remember what it was, but just for an example, if it was, you know, two, two, one, two, two, one in your read to slay, I needed to at the end do one, 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 one kind of thing and just kind of spread those last four or five threads out a little bit so that it just wasn't quite so tight. Would have given me nicer salvages. I've since fixed that on as much as I possibly could, um, but it's, I would have done it differently from the beginning. It's an 11 yard warp. It's quite a lot of tea towels to weave off and uh, it would have really done a nice job if I'd done that from the get go. That aside, the second thing, I did not print in color like I mentioned. I knew that these were woven in the manner of overshot, but when you print the pattern out, it looks like your tabby pick and your pattern pick is the same yarn and it's not. So the first few towels, my tabby and my pattern are the same. So I don't know if you can see that in there. 
that you get a pattern and a tabby and it's the same. So it makes them a lot thicker, it makes them a lot sturdier and a lot denser. These are going to be, they're actually going to last and they're going to wear, like they're going to, they're actually going to be quite, quite sturdy and I will keep them for our home. I do love the colors. I love the, the have drill like patterning. It's really pretty. I did use the duet as called for in the pattern. Um, and I played around with just eight, two cotton cause I was finding it was so thick. I was like, Oh my gosh, this is so thick. Like I'm just going to use eight, two cotton for both pattern and tabby not realizing that I wasn't reading the pattern properly. So these first few towels are woven tabby and pattern in the same yarn, basically. And you can see here, I have a, a, a treadling error. So these are going to be saved for our family and used for our family. And we will enjoy them and the small fortune of yarn that is in these and the treadling errors that I made in all their glory etc etc so then I got to the end of this last one and I realized that I had was making a mistake and I realized that not only should I have two shuttles I should have two different weights in those shuttles of yarn so then obviously I reprinted the pattern and was like oh my goodness gracious how did I miss that and honestly I think it was a combination of a whole bunch of things I think I was rushing I knew in my gut that I was missing something, that I needed that second shuttle and that I needed a pattern yarn and a tabby yarn. And I also don't get onto my spring very often. It's upstairs, it's in our bedroom. Um, I thought that putting it up there, I would use it a lot and that's not been the case. I, I don't get an opportunity to go up there and weave on that loom very often. So the result has been uh, not being able to get into deep work with a pattern and with a project. So here is the, 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 the towels fixed. And you can also see that my selvages are a little, a little bit nicer. I started to really figure that out as I went on. And but again, these are still quite dense, which I knew was the case from seeing Felicia's in real life. And uh, I will say the duet gives the, um, the fabric such a lovely, um, sheen because of the linen in it. And the, the camera is not going to pick up on that, but oh my goodness, this is orange. I threw orange duet in. This is probably my favorite towel other than the treadling error there. But um, I just love the blockiness of this. It's fun, it's pretty. And uh, yeah, it, it was these, these started to be fun because I realized that I had made that mistake. I was able to just punt and move on. This is one of my favorite towels. Unfortunately, there's a whole bunch of uh, treadling errors. Again, mere muggles wouldn't notice, but I notice. So I feel like I can't gift it, you know? And again, um, if you have a block, block A, block B, block C, it's gonna be the opposite on the other side, which is really fun. So these are fully reversible. And what I do with my hemming actually, is I turn my hems, but I do a zigzag stitch so that it's virtually invisible. So for somebody who doesn't notice things like which way the hem is and which side is the right side and the wrong side on tea towels, you could actually hang these this way and they wouldn't look wrong. It is the wrong side, quote unquote, for the hem, but because of the way that I do it with a zigzag, a very small zigzag stitch, um, it's actually really difficult to see. And uh, it nestles into the fabric really beautifully and I find that people just don't even notice. And then this is the most recent one that I pulled off and I do still have more of these on the loom. I love this one. This is just done with a, a eight, two cotton as the pattern and eight, two cotton as the uh, tabby. So a little bit finer, a little bit, a little bit easier to control the selvages because you have a finer yarn making that corner and, and turning or turning. So it's a little bit, a little bit cleaner selvages, a little bit, um, but very, very, very effective in the blocks. So that is my half draw. Like I said, they're not done, but I'm getting there. And so far I have woven off four that are in the manner of overshot. And I also, and I also wove off four for our family, basically like woven. It's not, is it on opposites when you do um, your plain weave and your uh, pattern in the same yarn? I can't remember what that's called. Somebody will throw it in the comments. And then finally was the stash crackle pop. So this was kind of the final project of the year. You can see some of my M's and O's are photographed here as well. The Stash Crackle Pop 
pattern was from Sharon Broadley. It's off of the Jane Stafford website. And this really was a lovely end to the year. Um, I really enjoyed this project. I, I, I enjoyed the learning. I went into it knowing that I had a lot to learn and knowing that I had, um, yeah, just, just, that it was brand new to me. I should have gone into the have draw drill with that with that attitude as well. Um, and uh, these are the original ones that are showing up on the slideshow right now. So they did come out quite large. Somebody, I think it was my friend, my friend Doreen, she had commented like, once you, these are hemmed and they won't seem so big, but they are pretty big. Um, they're a good size, they're great for our family. These initial ones were the ones that had that, that uh, threading error in them and I did cut them off the loom and fix that. Um, it was not for the faint of heart, but it worked really, really, really well. Again, I did the zigzag at the bottom in the hem so that it's very, very um, indistinguishable, indis doing, indistinguishable and almost invisible. So again, you can, you can um, reverse these. So this was the first one that I did. I love this one. Um, there are so many mistakes in this. There's a mistake there, there's a mistake there. I love it regardless, I don't care. It was my first project in uh, Crackle and I love it. My son loves these. Orange is one of his favorite colors. He loves color. And um, I love this towel because the gray just tones the whole thing down. It just brings it down a notch. Again, uh, threading error, but the orange makes it really, really fun. Um, then from there, uh, this one was treadled in classic crack, in um, Crackle in the manner of overshot. I, I copied Sharon with her three colors and um, I went, I'll, I'll hold it back a little bit so you guys can see. Um, and you can see how it's just got the the teal, the bright blue, and then the royal blue. Um, I don't think there are any mis Yes, there is a mistake in this one. There's a, a treadling error down here, but I don't think it's noticeable enough uh, to make any difference. So I, I'm, I'm still thinking that I probably will gift a couple of these away. Although I'm, I'm loath to, to let them go because they're so labor intensive. This was the one that I did in the manner of overshot in, or sorry, in the manner of classic crackle. Um, there is a treadling error in the bright blue. Um, it's right here. I didn't finish off my peak before I went on to the next, but that's okay. Again, you, you really can't notice this one was so much work. I'm keeping it. <laughs> it took days. Uh, managing those three treadle, those three shuttles and doing classic crackle for the first time, I'm keeping this one. And again, the gray just tones the whole thing down. It just really makes the, uh, the whole thing just really, really lovely. And then I have, and we can talk more about crackle in the new year. And then I got really just, I needed to weave stuff off at this point. So this is just, I fixed the, the threading error and so this one um, is just got that motif in the middle, like the orange one. I love this towel so much. I know my sister-in-law really like this one too. Um, I don't know that I'll ever put this warp back on the loom again. So like I'm loath to give these away because I love them so much. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? I like them too much to give them away. This one was orange again. I love this towel and I put it with gray this time. So it completely dulls the whole thing down. Like if you look at this with the gray and if I hold this one up with the yellow, so I did gray stripes in this one, same as the uh, gray over here, rather than um, the yellow stripes. I mean, look at the difference between these two towels. So, so, so different. Really fun, really fun. And then at the beginning I held, um, this is 8-2 cotton doubled, and then I did it just single 8-2 all the way through, and then I did the doubled again at the end. So you get a little bit of a different effect where you get the slightly brighter orange at either end, but then the tone down in the middle because it's just one pick, and you can see that the blocks are smaller because it's just one pick of pattern yarn in 8-2 rather than two of the 8-2 uh, cotton because it's thinner, right? So really fun, those two. And then um, this is woven in classic crackle again, but just a few pattern blocks. So nothing major, just classic crackle only in these sections. And then the rest of it is just striping. 
And at this point, like I said, I was just trying to weave off. Um, I'm very tempted to give this one to James's teacher um, because she likes bright colors and this is really pretty, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I love this one as well. It's a little bit smaller. I should have done a fifth of these and another section of striping to make it a little bit longer, but I was getting toward the end of the warp at this point. And um, there's a couple of skips in that one because I was getting to the end. And then this is just a little square. And I did the peachy orange, this is a different yarn with the light gray. And this will just be, um, I've already hemmed it actually. And I'm, I'm ripping out, I'm gonna make it fringed at the top and bottom, see? So I've, I've already done the stitching. I just have to pull all of this out and make it, make it fringed. So that's that. All right, so from here, let's, that, that was the year. I mean, it was a huge year for weaving, huge year. So let's spend the last little bit of the show talking about what is on my loom currently that is very holiday themed. So I hope that for those who don't celebrate the holidays that it's okay. When you weave this, change the colors. All right, let's get into that. So last but not least, I wanted to share with you what is on my loom. It's been a bit of a slog, like I said at the intro, to get it threaded, get it on the loom, and actually get weaving. And I don't think that I'll have an actual finished tea towel to be able to share with you before this goes up uh, on Tuesday. But I have been putting together a little pattern based on the um, learning that I've done around Crackle over the course of this fall. And I thought it was an opportunity to me so for me to take my learning and take what I've been sort of amassing, if you will, in terms of what's happening at the loom and the yarns that I've been working with and putting it into a little pattern for you. So this is a crackle tea towel pattern. It is an 8-2 cotton for your warp. And then for your weft, you're going to use 8-2 uh, cotton for your tabby and you're going to use 484 cotton for your pattern. So 82 for your uh, tabby and then 84 for your pattern. And you can use any colors that you want. I happened to purchase yarns that lended themselves a little bit more to the holiday season. I was hoping that I would have some of these done, uh, just a few of them done for teachers, for the kids, for them to give away. But I'm not sure that that's gonna happen. Fingers crossed, I only have to get three hemmed, but we'll see. I might have to wait till next year. Regardless, um, because I've been experimenting with all of this crackle um, and I've been working on four shafts with the crackle um, throughout the fall, I, I've just started to kind of explore lots of possibilities in fiber works and looking at different threadings and looking at different things. And I thought, oh, I could do this and I could do this. And because crackle works really well on a point twill because it is a point twill threading, uh, you know, what could you do if you substituted block A for uh, the first pick uh, for the the first pattern uh, pick uh, or, or the first pattern yarn of a point twill. What would happen if you substituted it into M's and W's? What would happen if you substituted it into anything? And then I decided, you know what, let's go back as far as we can to the simplest way of threading twill that you possibly can. And that is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, straight draw. So what I decided to do was substitute in the uh, blocks for one, two, three, four. So one, instead of just being one thread on one shaft, became block A. So if you're comfortable with profile drafts, and if you're comfortable working in profile drafts and looking at profile drafts, um, that it will help you on this journey. So let's look at the pattern together. I haven't plugged in all of the information for these towels just yet because I'm still weaving them and working out all the kinks and figuring this out but I'm hoping that this pattern will be released to you sometime next week so watch patreon.com slash woolen spinning and the wellfordpearls.com blog website uh, the pattern will be released in both places so let's have a look at the pattern and see what we can create all right, so we're gonna have a look at these crackle towels in the Word document that I'm creating for this pattern so that you guys can sort of go through my thought process with me and I can show you uh, what I mean by 
if you understand profile drafts, you can get this onto your loom really quickly. So we're for the warp and the weft, we're going to use 8-2 uh, cotton, like I said, and I actually wrote 2-8 um, cotton here, but what I meant was 8-2, and yes, there is a difference. Have a look at Laura Fry's um, talk on the School of Sweet Georgia under uh, about different types of yarn. I think it's called a good yarn. Um, and then for your for your weft, you're going to use 8-4 uh, cotton. So you're gonna use, for your pattern, you're gonna use 8-4 cotton. And then you're gonna use 8-2 cotton in neutral colors for your weft. And um, we'll have a look at the, uh, the the drawdown of this in just a moment, and we'll have a look at sort of what, what this looks like. You only need a four shaft loom that can weave a width of 22 inches. If you don't have a 22 inch weaving width and you would like to weave these, just cut the pattern down, take out a couple of repeats, and you can make these a little bit narrower. Uh, your width and read, uh, if you follow the pattern, your width and read is about 20.5 inches. And, um, they're weaving, they're, the draw-in has sort of been about 10% for me, so they're they're coming out at about 18 and a half, 19 inches uh, of weaving. And I've been really careful not to pull on my on the sides too much and on my selvages to, to draw it in really close. I'm weaving these at 18 ends per inch, and then the picks per inch is supposed to be about 18, but I'm finding that they're a little bit looser than that. They're coming out more at like 16, 17, um, and I've been playing around with that on the loom. So you can play with that and sample that. You can open up your ends per inch if you want and um, you can figure that out. I found this worked really well with the Stash Crackle Pop Towels by Sharon Broadley. So I just left everything the same and redid all the math and redid all of the, uh, the draft for this particular pattern. So I'm sure you wanna see what these look like. So this is the profile draft. All right, so using a profile draft is actually pretty straightforward. What we're looking at here is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So each of these um, little blocks here represent a, a, a threaded block. So we've got block A here because block A is doing this. And then we've got block B doing this, block C is doing this. It's gonna look different when you see it on the loom. They're actually doing different things even though it looks the same. And then block D is over here, and it looks the same as block A in the profile draft, but it's actually not. Um, on the loom, it's doing something different. Uh, remember that the blocks kind of follow each other in crackle, and they weave together in crackle, so you never get a clean, just single block. So here, we're going to treadle block B, so block B is so too followed by block C. Um, here we're going to treadle block A, so it also is followed by block B. So you can see how that starts to play out. We talked about that in the previous episode. So if you're comfortable threading from a draft like this, from a profile draft, what you're going to do is instead of putting a thread through shaft one here, instead you're going to look at this and say, oh, that's block A of my crackle. And so therefore, for that little thread there, that actually represents more threads than that. That represents one, two, three, two, because block A in Crackle is one, two, three, two. So that's four threads. So we're looking here at actually 12 threads. One, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two. We're gonna thread that three times, one, two, three, two. And then we're gonna shift up to block B, but what do we know from our last discussion? We know that we need an incidental before we jump to block B from block A. So this final one is actually one, two, three, two, one. And then we jump up to block B. And now we do that again three times, but this time we're threading for three times for block B. Two, three, four, three, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, three, two, because now we're gonna to jump to block C and so on. When you get to the end of block D, it's the exact same thing. So for block D, we're gonna go uh, four, one, two, one, four, one, two, one, four, one, two, one, four, and then we're gonna jump down to one because it's a continuation. We're doing a straight draw. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, if we went back down to block C here, that would be fine as well. We could do a point twill instead, but having our incidental here before, we're not actually jumping two blocks, we're just continuing on. Pretend that this block is up here and we're just continuing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's why it works and that's why we get the same thing every single time. So when you're threading this, 
um, for our ends, we need 366 ends, and that does include one floating selvage on each side. So what you're going to do when you start threading is you're going to leave one thread at the beginning for your floating selvage, and then you're going to thread one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, three, two. 3414 4, and then you're going to start all over again. And you're just going to work your way across your warp. So if you um, did uh, wind two repeats um, of the blue, if you did do a contrasting, it's all in the in the pattern. But um, basically, I have three of these repeats. Uh, in the natural in the middle and then I have two of the repeats on each outside edge so you've sort of got a division of space into thirds kind of and um, it's just shy on the two outside edges and it makes it a really nice graphic the just like the snap crackle pop towels having that that change in in warp color very neutral very understated it's very difficult you know it's, it, at first glance it just looks like a shade it looks like a, a slightly different but it's not too different um, it just gives more interest to the cloth and then what you're going to do is you're going to come down here and you're going to treadle them until square so i've put in four here because that squared it on the graphic but what you're going to do is you're going to go to your loom and depending on your set and what you decide to do you are going to decide how many of these pattern picks you do for my version at the moment it seems to be eight pattern picks is working so you could take these and sort of represent there's five here but um uh, for me that would be I would I would do it another three times and do eight in total six wasn't quite enough five was too few ten was too much eight was the sweet spot for for me for my um how I'm um weaving at the moment um so I just did this to sort of show you what it might look like. And this is your draw down here. Uh, please note that this is for a rising shed loom. So your tie up is done based on a rising shed loom. So over here on the right hand side, you have your tabby treadles. Um, so one, th one, three against two, four. And I like to do those with my right foot. It just makes sense to me. Um, when I step on the two, four, I know that I'm throwing the shuttle from the right. When I step on the one, three, I know that I'm throwing the shuttle from the left. It just works for me. Um, and then for the tie down, it's, it's a straightforward twill tie up. So, um, three, four, one, four, one, two, two, three. If you are on a sinking shed loom, you are going to tie up one, two, two, three, three, four, one, four, and that will give you the pattern in front of you on top of your work. If you tie it up this way, then your work is going to be on the underside because this is for a rising shed or a jack loom. If you have a counterbalance loom, or sorry, a counter marsh loom, uh, you need to tie up everything. So your white is going to go onto your. Um, how does it work? So if I were to tie this up on my uh, counter marsh upstairs on my spring, I would tie up the black to my lambs that go up that rise. And I would tie the white to my lambs that go down that lower that 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 drop. Um, so the um, you can you can figure that out. Otherwise, you're just going to have pattern on the wrong side. That's all. It's not going to be wrong. It's just that you're going to have your pattern coming up on the other side. That's all. So not good, not bad, just different. All right, so then from there, I gave you guys a couple of different ways that you could treadle this. So um, I talked about you know how many ends you're gonna wind in the wood light blue, how many ends you're gonna wind in the natural or the white, whatever you decide to use, and then you're gonna wind another 105 ends in your light blue. Again, that includes your floating salvages. These are your crackle blocks so that you guys can remember. You can always print this out and have it for you um, um, sitting there. And then down here, I did the, the whole draw down. So I did one repeat of the blue and one repeat of the white so that you could see what it would look like on the loom. Um, again, I only did five pattern threads because it just gets too big and it's too much to put on the page, but you can do however many pattern threads you need or want to square your graphic. It's up to you. I did eight. 
Um, but I'll leave that with you, your set, what you decide to do, what yarns you decide to use, all that kind of stuff. So this is what it looks like when it's woven in the manner of overshot. So this is where you throw um, a pick in your pattern and then a tabby and then a pattern and then a tabby and then a pattern. And I have it changing color here so that you can see the different colors that I used. I treadled this a little bit differently. Um, I'll show you that in some photos in just a moment. And then what I decided to do was after giving you in the manner of overshot and giving you sort of a little bit of a rundown on what that looks like and how to treadle that and, and, and what that sort of looks like, um, I also gave you the information for, for weaving these in the manner of classic crackle. So this is a twill like sequence. And so we've gotten rid of the tabby. Um, and so I gave you this, this uh, table here that gives you um, your, your different ground threads and your pattern threads. You can probably figure this out that P is pattern, X is your one of your ground threads, and Y is your other ground thread. So in classic crackle, we, we weave with three shuttles. Now I haven't had a chance to weave these per classic crackle. I hope to have that to show you guys in the new year. It's just been a wee bit too crazy around here. We're lucky these are even on the loom. <laughs> um, so basically what you're gonna choose is, um, I, I decided that when I go ahead and try these, that I would do um, ground Y would be in the lightest blue that I used in the warp, and the X would be in the natural that I used in the warp, so that I would have those, those two colors running in the warp and the weft. And then I would rotate through my pattern colors of the 8-4 cotton that I had that I have bought. So that's what I would do. So this is your treadling sequence. So if you are treadling block A and you want to run through that and, and treadle that a certain number of times, you're gonna repeat block A until you have the number of pattern threads that you are looking for to square your graphic. So knowing what I know now, after getting these on the loom, it's probably going to be eight, uh, four times. Treadling block A four times to give you eight pattern thread picks and that will square your graphic if you weave per pattern. Um, so pattern A will weave one, two, three, two, and then you're and several times you're gonna you know maybe do that four times and then you're gonna move on to block B. Now this is where it gets complicated. You need an incidental just like when you're threading you need an incidental between block A and block B. So don't forget to uh, add an extra pick of block of, of um, X. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna treadle one, two, three, four, um, sorry, one, two, three, two for block A, one, two, three, two, you're gonna do that a second time, one, two, three, two, third time, but you wanna square your graphics, so you're gonna do it a fourth time, one, two, three, two, and you're gonna finish on your pattern, but you need an incidental before you start block B. Otherwise it'll look like it, it, it doesn't gel properly. So you need one more one. So one in X, and then you're gonna start two on X. So you're gonna get two picks of the same color, and that looks like this. And they're right in there. You see how you get that double pick of one, of one and then two, and then two and then three, and then three and then four, and then four and one. Okay, so just remember that. You need your incidental when you're treadling classic crackle. One, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one in X, two in X, three, four, three, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, three, two to finish off block B, and then you're gonna start on block C. Three, four, one, four, three, four, one, four, three, four, one, four, three, down here, and then you're gonna go to block D. Four, one, two, one, four, one, two, one, four, and so on. So you need to, you're gonna have a double pick in there, and it, and what it does is actually really cool. What it does is it frames it almost, and I showed you the towel, the uh, stash crackle pop towels that I had treadled in classic crackle. What it does is it, it frames each of the, each of the rows. It's really, really pretty, and I'll pop a photo in here so that you guys can see what that looks like. Um, let me just take this away uh, so that you guys can see what that looks like on the loom. Okay, so I thought what I would do is actually just 
talk to this while we're sitting here. So if you notice this, so this is, this is treadled in classic crackle. These are the stash crackle pop towels. Um, I, I used three shuttles and I did exactly what we were just talking about with the crackle tea towels that, that I'm releasing for Christmas. Um, and if you look in between, it's really obvious right in the middle of the photo there, um, where the blue and the pink are, uh, perfectly in focus right in the center of the photo there. You can really see where you get that solid looking line of yellow before you go to the next block. And that is caused by the double pick of yellow. It's caused by that extra thread, that incidental that helps us to transition to the next block. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about it by that framing that you get. And of course, my Y yarn here was that beautiful limette, that lime greeny kind of light color. And my pattern was a double pick of 8-2 cotton here. So you don't have to have 8-4 cotton in your stash. You can just wind 8-2 cotton doubled or just do a double pick like you would for basket weave. Um, and that because you've got floating selvages, you can do that. Just watch your draw in. So just make sure you give yourself lots of weft yarn space to be able to, um, so that it doesn't mess up your selvages basically. But that's what it looks like when you weave classic crackle. And here's another photo. Again, you can really see that framing and that double pick of yellow. Um, if you look right down here, right where I'm sitting, um, those between those those pink blocks, you can see that there's that little bit of a thickness, thicker sort of nature to the fabric almost. It's a little bit more um, textured, a little bit more interest, and that is caused by that double pick of the one, two, the two, three, the three, four, or the four, one. So that's what it's gonna look like when you treadle these as um as classic crackle which is really exciting I, I hope you guys do it okay so back to the pattern there's really nothing else to share i i talk a little bit about about finishing because these do have bright Christmas red in them, um, as well as a deep forest green. And the other thing that I wanted to chat about was here I showed you uh, in, woven in the manner of overshot as well as woven in classic crackle, um, I show a different color every single um, color block. So there's like the red and then there's the yellow and then there's the lighter green and then the forest green. So, um, and the same in the manner of overshot, although I didn't include the forest green here. Um, because I really was including this mostly for you to see the threading for those who needed the threading to be written out rather than doing it off of the profile draft. Um, what I have done at the loom, and I, again, I will pop a photo in here to show you, is um, I have actually woven three blocks um, uh, so that it, so that it creates like flying geese. And I may actually change the name of this pattern to flying geese crackle tea towels um, because I just love that block from quilting. And I kept coming up with it again and again in Fiberworks. And I thought, well, how can I highlight this in our weaving? And the answer came with, let's do color blocks. So, so uh, you know, B block is woven I'll just go back up to the to the profile draft here. Um, B block here um, is woven um, as uh, one color, and then A block is the same color as as B block, and then the same again on B block. So it's you know B A B, and that gives you this flying geese pattern. And I'll show you uh, what that looks like on the loom. All right, so I thought that I would show you here the photos that I do have off of the loom at this moment. So I wish I had more to show you, but at this point, this is what I have. Um, hopefully our first episode back in the new year will be a whole like show and tell of these towels finished. It'll be a little bit, you know, post facto because it'll be after Christmas, but that's okay. Um, this is what I mean about the flying geese. And so what I've been doing here is I'm weaving in the manner of overshot. So I'm doing tabby between each pattern thread and I'm just weaving a block, uh, B block, A block, B block, and then uh, B block, C block. I'm gonna have to write it out um, so that you guys can see. So I don't wanna mess it up. I'll, um, but, but basically what you're doing is choose a block to start on. It doesn't matter what block you start on. Start on that block, go to the next block, and then go back to the original block that you were treadling and that you started on, and that will give you this flying geese pattern. So it's just really pretty, just really fun to, to play with. Um, there's so many things that you can do with this pattern at the loom. It's very, very straightforward. It's just A, B, C, D, 
So whatever you can think of to do with straight, with a straight draw, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you can do it in Crackle. And you can jot it down as a profile. You don't have to jot it down every single um, thing that you have to treadle. You can just write down like, you know, A, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. And you know, based on the Crackle blocks, if you're weaving in the manner of overshot, you're gonna weave a certain number of picks to square your graphic for A, and then a certain number of picks to square your graphic for B, and same for C and D, and just throw your tabby in between. And then if you wanna do it in classic Crackle, you know that you need to go in the twill sequence, one, two, three, four, um, so one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, but you're gonna be alternating your, your um, ground X and your ground Y. So, and your pattern stays the same. If it's, if you're, it, the way I figured out classic crackle is actually, um, it, it, it really started to make sense once I started to do it. Uh, and, and I did, you know, did it for an entire two towels. And by the end of it, I was like, oh, I get it. So if you look here and I'll make this a little bit bigger for you. If you look here, um, Every, oh, this is the wrong red. That's so funny. I never noticed that. Um, if you look here, um, you've got your ground X. So let's just do this for block A, but it, it applies to every single block. Um, for block A, we've got one on ground X and we've got three on ground Y and then we've got one on ground X again. So every time you're on treadle two is pattern for block A. So every time you press down treadle two, you've got a pattern pick. So you know that if you're on two and that's the next pick, you've got to be throwing your pattern thread. It's the same for block B, except now it's it's three. Every time you're on treadle three, that's your pattern. Every time for block B, for block C, that was for block B, block C, every time you're on four, you're throwing a pattern. D, which one haven't we thrown yet? One, every time you're on one, 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 you're throwing a pattern. So the only thing that's left is where does your X and Y go? So you're throwing a lot less, a lot less Y than you are X, unless you're just gonna keep on treadling the same block over and over, which is a beauty of Crackle, you can just keep on going. Um, and don't forget that incidental when you want to change, but you know that every time for block D, for example, every time you're on treadle two, you're throwing your light gray, your Y. Every time you're on four, you're on block D, four, you're throwing um, X, which is here, white. Um, so if you can start to kind of make those, those connections, um, you'll, you'll really find that this stuff becomes more and more intuitive and finding tricks like that really help. And, uh, we can go into that in more detail in early January, if you guys would like to, cause this is our last show of this, of the year, but, um, uh, we can absolutely review this. We don't have to use Christmas colors, um, but we can review this again in January. If that would be helpful, comment below. So those will be released over the next couple of, um, over, probably by the, by next week. And, um, it was, it was really fun because I, I released a candy cane, uh, twill towels last year at this time. And it was an opportunity to kind of take everything that I had learned in unit one of my OHS and put it into practice at the loom with a bit of color and weave effect. And, um, this year people were weaving them, which was so much fun. They were actually taking the candy cane like motif and they wove them up. So I know it's not probably enough time between now and Christmas for people to weave these up for this year, but hopefully this pattern, you can print it off, you can keep it, it's free. Um, and you can plan these for next year. Maybe you can throw them on your loom in July and uh, have Christmas in July. The other thing too is you can change the colors. These don't have to be Christmas themed. They just happen to be this time of year that I happen to be using these colors. So that's it for me. That's it for today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Until next time, happy, happy weaving. Bye everyone.